Some of you may have experienced a friend or a family member in hospice care or receiving end of life care. This is known as palliative care. Mark Hughes and Thomas Smith use the World Health Organization's definition in their article, The Growth of Palliative Care in the United States, which says, an approach that improves the quality of life of patients and their families facing the problem associated with life-threatening illness through the prevention and relief of suffering by means of early identification and impeccable assessment and treatment of pain and other problems, physical, psychosocial, and spiritual." End quote. Today, I'll give you reasons why the end-of-life care needs to be more accessible and how that will lower physician-assisted suicide rates. The fear of being a burden to others is real. Some may experience it in current everyday life. Others, like patients in hospice, may not feel it until they're receiving palliative care. In the article, The Arguments for Euthanasia and Physician-Assisted Suicide, Ethical Reflections, Eduardo Rodriguez outlines the poor quality of life. Quote, this includes progressive loss of activity, mobility and freedom, increasing helplessness, independence on others, physical discomfort such as nausea, dyspnea, inability to swallow or talk, fear of dying, incontinence, weakness, loss of dignity, and dementia. Life loses all quality and meaning to the point that death is preferable." End quote. A reason for physician-assisted suicide is poor quality of life. Dependence on others and helplessness is listed in Rodriguez's article, as I just said, and that can lead to the fear of burdening others. If hospice followed its job, outlined in Harold Roswell's United States Hospice Structure and its implications for the right to die debate, which says to alleviate the dying person's FBO, physician-assisted suicide rates would lower. Florence Wald um, founded Hospice in the United States, was quoted by Roswell, saying, the dying individual feels himself a burden on those around him, unable to contribute and becoming weaker. He sees that he saps their strength as his own diminishes." End quote. This quote describes how the patients feel experiencing the fear of branding others. Describing how they feel can invoke empathy in people and make them feel the strength of un and understand why physician-assisted suicide is chosen. Not only is hospice becoming less responsive to the patient's fear of burdening others, it's also becoming unresponsive to hopelessness. Hopelessness is another reason for physician-assisted suicide that could help be avoided by better hospice care. Hopelessness and the fear of burdening others go hand in hand. In Predictors and Correlates of Interest in Assisted Suicide in the Final Month of Life among ALS Patients in Oregon and Washington, Linda Ganzini, Maria Silveria, and Wendy Johnston wrote, quote, Hopelessness is a way of thinking in which negative expectations about the future are pervasive. The finding that hopelessness is strongly predictive of assisted suicide is consistent with the studies examining the role of hopelessness in other types of suicide. Suicidologists report that hopelessness is a stronger predictor of suicidal ideation and completed suicide than is depressive disorder, end quote. This was found out during a survey of 50 physicians with patients with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, more commonly known as Lou Gehrig's disease, um, and how they were interested in physician-assisted suicide. They found that hopelessness is a high predictor of it, even more than depression is. Gianzini further supports her claim with a quote from Cho Chino, saying, a study of terminally ill patients demonstrated that hopelessness accounted for more variation in suicidal ideation than did depression, which basically says the same thing. Depression is less of a predictor than hopelessness is. The article, Predictors of Pursuit of Physician-Assisted Death, also agrees with this claim. Hopelessness can cause physician-assisted suicide. Catherine Smith, Teresa Habit, Elizabeth Goy, and Linda Ganzini report that physician-assisted death requesters 
had higher levels of depression, hopelessness, and dismissive attachment. So they all go hand in hand, causing a patient to want to commit suicide. Reducing the fear of framing <coughs> others in hopelessness are things hospice should be doing for patients. Now that I've told you what should be done in hospice, I'll share why many find it hard to access. Accessibility lowers as the cost raises, as well as the rate of need increases. The rate of need increases faster than the growth of hospice, although. Using Smith used statistics on the aging population of the United States and the cost of hospice in the US in their previously mentioned article. Quote, we see the need for palliative care growing substantially in the next decades over the 30 years that the field of palliative care has developed in the United States. The US population has grown from 228 million to 309 million people with a 10% increase in the past decade. America's population is getting older as well. In 1980, 11% of the population was 65 years or older, whereas in 2010, this figure rose to 13%. So you can see that in this um, graph. <coughs> and with this quote, you can see that the population is aging, which means we need more palliative care and hospice is growing. However, they aren't growing and we're not aging at the same rate. Um, patients are incurring more out-of-pocket expenditures in the last five years of life, end quote. Even if someone is able to receive the care they need and deserve, they may, may still struggle mentally in their last few months of life. To help you further understand the mental struggle some face in their last few months, I'll leave you with a story. Dr. Timothy Quill was a primary care physician for Diane. After her death, he wrote her testimony in Death and Dignity, a case of individualized decision making. Diane was diagnosed with leukemia and lived surprisingly well for refusing chemotherapy. She wanted to live her life because she'd already had many cancers and knew leukemia was a very bad prognosis. But eventually, quote, Bone pain, weakness, fatigue, and fevers began to dominate her life. Although the hospice workers, family members, and I tried our best to minimize the suffering and promote comfort, it was clear that the end was approaching. Diane's immediate future held what she feared the most, increasing discomfort, dependence, and hard choices between pain and sedation, end quote. Diane overdosed on barbiturates shortly after because she was scared to become a burden to her family and depend on them fully. Although physician-assisted suicide can't be completely eradicated with better hospice care, rates can lower. Today, I provided you with the argument to reduce hospice costs and change the way it is run so that we can lower physician-assisted suicide rates. You now are aware of the importance of accessible hospice. You might also experience it firsthand as your parents and relatives need to enter a nursing home or hospice care. Thank you for listening to my speech.